Imagine having a machine gun pointed in your face and you don't know what the other person is saying. You don't speak the same language. You're alone and you don't know how it's going to end. Well, that happened to me a few years ago. I was in a car being driven across the Shenzhen border in China, feeling sleepy, with my phone battery dead and a driver who only spoke Mandarin. I didn't have any cause for concern because I had done this many times before, and I was looking forward to a martini at my Hong Kong hotel bar. But that all changed once my car was surrounded by military police and assault rifles and that sleepy demeanor was terminated by adrenaline. All I could do was figure out the fact that I had no phone, no translator, and with the police taking my passport, I was possibly in the most dangerous position I had ever been in in my entire life. I watched the police tear down the inside of the car, searching for some sort of contraband, and I also watched my driver freak out. But no, I was gonna be different. I was gonna handle the situation. I just thought about everything I had learned over the course of my lifetime and put it into work. For example, I knew from my acting days that fear is never an option and I had to lean into my authenticity to be as likable as possible. I also knew that I had to keep a relaxed posture and that paired with my chic outfit communicated a sense of authority a sense of comfort in my appearance. And beyond that, I kept quiet, allowing for the absence of my voice to communicate a sense of calm, and that I had nothing to hide. It seemed like hours, but about 45 minutes later, the police handed back my passport, and I was allowed to continue on safely. My driver drove me as fast as he could back to the hotel. I poured myself that martini, and to this day, I have no idea what caused this military action. When I think about it, in my opinion, I think what saved me was my executive presence, or as you may have heard it be called before, gravitas, je ne sais quoi, or biao dan And everyone talks about executive presence, but I find that not a, peop not a lot of people know how to get it. A lot of people seem to either be born with it or they just struggle with it their entire lives, effectively eliminating a plethora of possibilities. Now, in my current life as an executive coach, I've had thousands of professionals ask me time and again about how to get executive presence, from hedge fund managers to influencers to former Olympians. And I have a unique perspective on the topic, being that I've had a nonlinear and portfolio career. You've probably never met somebody who's been an ex-fashionista and a Columbia MBA, McKinsey consultant, and also a voice actor, oh, and an executive coach. So really, what I've learned is that through especially all these experiences, but in particular, acting and the fashion world, I've learned how to actually get executive presence. And the good news is that it's simple, but it's just not easy. And what you can remember is the one thing is to be differentiated through voice, appearance, and authenticity. Those are the key ingredients. The first thing we can talk about then is voice. With voice, I learned at a young age that not everybody's voice is created equal. Some people seem to be heard while others are kind of like a whisper in the wind. And because of this, I started to have friends in my 20s ask me for advice before they'd go into an important conversation. So for example, maybe they wanted to know how to ask for that raise while not sounding nervous, or they wanted to ask out that cute guy while sounding sexy and confident. And these elevated capabilities in voice became clear when I was scouted to be a voice actor, and I started to do actual training on the subject. I learned how to manipulate my voice in various ways to change my presence. And through this training, I realized I had been doing this all along in the boardroom and with my friends while giving them advice. And now I could just articulate why it worked. So there's a lot of different ways that you can change your voice in order to affect your executive presence. 
one of those that really requires no particular background or any other types of practice is something that you can use to get somebody to say yes if you really want to influence someone or convince them of something. And this tool is super simple. All you're going to do is voice a question in the form of a statement. And in this way, you're basically not going to inflect upward. You're going to avoid the higher note at the end of a sentence. And that way, it'll be psychologically harder for the other party to say no or to question you. So overall, really, what I'd love for you to remember about voice is that sometimes it's not so much about the content or really the words, but more about the delivery or the voice of what you're saying. And frankly, today, you may not remember everything that I say to you, but you will remember the delivery and how my voice made you feel. So now that we've talked about voice, I'd love to talk about the second key ingredient, which is appearance, which is my personal favorite. And one disclaimer I wanna give here is that there's so many things that we can't change about our appearance, and that's beautiful. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the things you can change. And I have to say, I learned from a very early on moment in my acting and fashion careers just how much appearance can affect your presence. I learned from acting that if I just wore a particular accessory or a certain outfit, it would allow me to just be really successful in that character. And similarly, in the fashion world, I learned early on that even a placement of a button on a dress could just alter the entire presence it had going down the red carpet. And really, this is important for us to remember because everything we wear is costume. We're born naked, all of us. So every single choice that we're making here, from the clothes, the shoes, the hair, everything is a choice in its costume. So we might as well treat it like a fashionista or actor would, right? Just think about what role you want to play. How do you want to be perceived? And more importantly, how do you want to feel? How do you want to be perceived by the world? So for me, I realized that for today, there was a lot that I thought about with my appearance. And certainly, I wasn't planning on wearing this fabulous boot for my broken foot, but I did put some thought into the type of boot that I wore and to make sure that it looked as close as possible to a Balenciaga piece coming off the Paris red carpet, right? I mean, hey, might as well. And then certainly, I also made, to, made sure to wear these signature glasses of mine and to wear a dress that would pop with the red and black background. So certainly, there's always something we can do when we think about our appearance or our costume in order to prepare to create a beautiful presence. You have to remember that we're solving for executive presence. Your presence has to be memorable. Now, for any of you looking to quickly kind of change your appearance in order to get that executive presence, I would say think about a signature item. If you consider the late Steve Jobs, for instance, he was known for those silver-rimmed glasses and that black turtleneck. It really helps you to be memorable, and it just takes all the guesswork out of getting ready in the morning and helps others remember who you are. So the next time that you're thinking about a major meeting or an event, consider what your signature item could be. And when in doubt, maybe wear something a little different from the crowd just because you can. So now we're gonna talk about the third item on the list, which is authenticity. And this is important because without authenticity, with just voice and with appearance, you're only going to get to a certain ceiling. Authenticity is going to really push you over the edge in creating that executive presence. And I wanna talk about it because it's not just this buzzword that everybody uses today, right? It's actually very important. And I learned this from my acting days. I learned that if I didn't know what made my character work, if I didn't know what made them tick, what motivated them, then I wouldn't be successful. And even more importantly, if I didn't let that out of the bag, that secret out to the audience, you guys wouldn't really care about what was happening, right? So it's really important to let people know in on a little secret about who you are, about what's really going on behind that curtain. So that's really how I started to learn about the importance of authenticity and how powerful it is. Another way to think about it is, 
you have to be connected to yourself in order to expect anybody else to connect to you. So that's why it's important. Now, almost more importantly to talk about today is the fact that I've seen what actually stops people from being authentic most of the time. You don't really hear somebody saying, oh, I don't want to be authentic. I don't want to be myself. So what's stopping people from doing this? And it's fear, right? I learned from the fashion and acting days that fear is never an option. If you have fear, you're just not going to be relevant. Absolutely not. And I learned that you have to embrace that fear and learn what's going to stop you. Why are you feeling that way? So for all of you today, if you're going to build that authenticity and build that presence for yourself, I would recommend just starting to drill down if something makes you nervous or upset or fearful. Keep asking yourself why as you drill down. And over time, you'll start to uncover some interesting things about yourself. And you know, use a coach or a friend if you need help going down this rabbit hole. The other thing you can do is play devil's advocate with yourself. And ask yourself, does this even make sense? What would the other side of the argument be? And you'll probably start to find that there's maybe even a lack of logic or evidence because what you're feeling is emotional and it is fear-based. So we've talked now about all these secret ingredients, right, to get to executive presence. And I'd love to share with you just one more personal story of mine that kind of shows all of them in action. And this brings me back to my days uh, back at Columbia Business School when I was a total outsider. I was getting my MBA and I was the only person there with a non-traditional background coming from that crazy fashion industry. I had no idea how to build a financial model and I was, you know, in fact, a color and fabric expert. So I kind of felt like it was a weakness. But what I learned was that I actually was able to turn that into a strength by using my presence and my authenticity. The night in particular I'm thinking of was a recruiting event for a company called McKinsey, which was the top management consulting firm in the world that I would later go on to join. So I walked into this event and I see a bunch of MBA hopefuls circling a McKinsey partner who has a glass of whiskey that's almost empty. And he looks pretty bored and kind of staring at the bottom of his glass. He says, all right, can everybody share one more thing about themselves? And I just piped in, oh, well, I'm an expert in color theory. He kind of looked surprised and looked up from his drink and started to ask me questions. And I kind of realized I was stealing the show. It was pretty cool. And through that evening, I realized that my executive presence formula was working. So for example, I had gone in and basically thwarted the entire black and navy suit dress code by wearing a DVF brightly colored dress and a pair of Louboutin heels. And I did that because it made me feel good. It still looked professional, but I felt powerful. And therefore, I was communicating that power and authority in my appearance. And beyond that, I was being authentic by sharing all of these stories that I had about fashion week, models, runway shows, weaving jacquard silk in India. And it certainly was very different from everybody else, but I was just sharing my authentic story. And lastly, my voice was being used to communicate these things with confidence. So overall, the executive presence formula worked, and I used my voice, my authenticity, and my appearance to get there. Again, it's simple, maybe not easy. But the one thing I really want you to remember today is that any of you can get executive presence. Again, it's not easy, but it is simple. So it is possible to get there. And we've talked today about a couple of different tools that you can just immediately use after today. So my hope for you is that you can all go home and build that executive presence and see what it can do for you. Thank you.